It's that time of year again when we scramble to meet our annual goals while trying to make time for the family and the endless list of holiday events. It's hard to think that we are also only a few weeks away from starting another year in business with another set of expectations. But have you prepared for the new year yet? Do you have your goal set? Do you know how you are going to be profitable in the new year? I think it's time for us to discuss how to best get ready for the year ahead of us so we don't get caught flat-footed on January 2nd. Let's dive in. Welcome to You Are Buzzworthy. Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of You Are Buzzworthy. I'm your host, Michael Bazinski, and today we're diving into a topic that's crucial for every business owner. We're going to talk about preparing your business for a profitable new year. But before we get started, let me take a moment to express my gratitude to our fantastic listeners. Your support and feedback have been incredible this year. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast or YouTube channel and follow us on social media to stay updated. All right, let's kick off by reflecting on the past year. As we approach the end of the year, it's crucial to take a look back and evaluate how your, your business performed. What worked and what didn't? Were there any unexpected challenges you faced? One of the most vital tools for this introspection is analyzing your key performance indicators or your KPIs. These are like the vital signs of your business and they can tell you a lot about its health. Your revenue is of course a fundamental KPI. It's the lifeblood of your business. By analyzing your revenue trends over the past year, you can identify your most profitable products or services, as well as areas where you might have fallen short. This insight can guide your pricing strategy and resource allocation for the coming year. This is a huge topic that deserves its own episode all to itself. So let's put a pin in it for this specific KPI until next week, where I will discuss how to optimize, optimize your revenue and create a profitable pricing strategy. That means if you haven't already, it's time to subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on this very impactful episode. All right, another critical KPI is client satisfaction. Happy clients are more likely to become loyal clients and advocate for your business. Look at customer feedback, reviews, and surveys. What are your clients saying about their experiences? Identify areas where you've excelled and those that might need improvement. I like to use this exercise to also gather case studies. As we are getting feedback through client surveys, we identify our most happy clients and, and then ask them to give reviews, if they, and that, that is if they haven't already. We also look behind the scenes on what we have done for these clients and create case studies to use in our marketing for the upcoming year. The third KPI you want to take a look at is employee productivity which is often an overlooked KPI, but has significant impact on your business. Assess how efficiently your team is working. Are there bottlenecks in your processes? Are your employees engaged and motivated? Productive and satisfying employees can lead to better client experiences and ultimately higher profits. By taking a deep dive into these KPIs, you will gain valuable insights into your business's strengths and weaknesses. It's not just about looking at the numbers. It's about understanding the story they tell and using that knowledge to make informed decisions as you prepare for the new year. So as we move forward, remember to consider these KPIs as your compass in navigating the path to a more profitable and successful year ahead. Now that you have a clear understanding of where your company sits with these three vital KPIs, it's time to set clear goals to improve each in the new year. It's not enough 
to have a vague idea of what you want to achieve. You need to set SMART goals. If you're not familiar, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. These goals act as a roadmap, guiding your efforts and helping you stay on track. Let's do a quick review on how to make SMART goals. First, specific. When we talk about specificity, can you say that? Specificity, we mean that your goals should be well-defined and clear. Instead of a goal like increase revenue, be specific by saying increase revenue by 15% in the first quarter. Then you want to make sure your goal is measurable. Measurability means that you can track your progress. You should have a way to quantify your goals. If it's about expanding your client base, then set a target number of new clients you aim to acquire. Then you must make sure that it's achievable. Goals must be realistic. It's excellent to aim high, but your goals should still be within reach based on your resources, your capabilities, marketing con or market conditions. Setting unattainable goals can be demotivating, but you also want them to be challenging so you don't cut your potential short. Then you need to make sure it's relevant. Relevance is about ensuring your goals align with your overall business objectives. If your primary focus is on customer satisfaction, a goal related to improving your website's user experience may be more relevant than expanding your product line. And lastly, make sure your goals are time bound. Make sure um, they are, have a specific time frame in mind. Setting a deadline creates a sense of urgency and helps you prioritize tasks. For example, launch a new service by the end of second quarter. Okay. I like to set goals in two phases. First is creating an overarching goal for the year or a set of goals for the year. This is usually based on criteria I gathered from my vital KPIs. Then I break each of those goals into objectives. I analyze the time and resources it will take to complete each objective. I look at my company's cap capacity and then create quarterly timelines for those objectives. This creates four sets of 90-day sprints my team can focus on throughout the year. I find this helps us keep our annual goals on track. Regardless of how you approach your goals, be sure to define your objectives clearly using SMART criteria. This approach will not only help you clarify your vision, but also ensure you have a concrete plan to achieve it. So we, as we move forward, remember that setting SMART goals is like putting your business on the fact, fast track to success in the new year. Now let's move on to financial planning, a topic I'm particularly passionate about. It's essential to have a solid financial plan in place for the upcoming year. This is separate from optimizing your revenue, which I will cover in, the, in next week's episode. No, when we talk about financial planning, we're discussing your budget, diligently monitoring expenses, and ensuring a healthy cash flow. I can tell you from my own experience how crucial financial stability is in any successful business. It's been the keystone to my success and even my failures throughout four different business ventures. Let's break each piece down separately. Creating a budget. Most of us know a budget serves as a financial roadmap for the year ahead. It outlines your expected revenue and expenses giving you a clear picture of your financial health. But how many of you actually follow your budget and how do you use it as a tool for making decisions? Are you prioritizing your budget for the expenses and investments that will help your business? This is another topic that needs its own space. So stay tuned for an upcoming episode where I dissect a profitable budget. But for now, let's move on to monitoring expenses. This is a crucial step in creating a budget that can make or break the financial health of your business. Every dollar counts, and this is especially true for service-based businesses. In our world, profitability often hinges on managing costs efficiencies. 
unlike product service businesses, you where you might have tangible goods to sell, your services are intangible, making cost control all the more crucial. Every dollar you spend impacts your bottom line. So it's, in, it's vital to ensure that each expense serves a purpose and contributes to your business success. Properly monitoring expenses helps you identify areas where you might be overspending. It's not uncommon for businesses to accumulate unnecessary costs over time, whether it's redundant software subscriptions, underutilized resources, or erroneous perks. By closely scrutinizing your expenses, you can pinpoint such areas and take corrective actions. On the flip side, expense monitoring also reveals cost-cutting opportunities. By identifying inefficiencies or non-essential expenditures, you can make informed decisions about where to trim expenses without compromising the quality of your services. These cost savings can add up significantly over time and positively impact your profitability. Regularly reviewing your expenses ensures that you're staying on track with your financial goals. It allows you to compare your actual spending against your budget amounts, enabling you to make real-time adjustments if necessary. This proactive approach helps you avoid budget shortfalls and financial surprises down the road. I make it a point to review my expenses every six months. I usually do one pass at the beginning of the fourth quarter, so I have time to make adjustments for the new year, and then again in June or July to be sure there hasn't been any expense creep the first half of the year. The last thing I look at is my cash flow. A healthy cash flow is the lifeblood of your business. It ensures you have enough funds to cover operating costs, seize opportunities, and weather unexpected challenges. Effective cash flow management in involves managing receivables, payables, and having financial cushion for emergencies. I personally like using the profit first method to manage my cash flow. It's a concept created by my friend Mike McCallowitz. He wrote a book uh, about the methodology called Profit First. This is one of the three books that has shaped my current success. It's also one of my top three recommended books to entrepreneurs to read. Look into it if you haven't read it already. You can also check out my interview with him in the episode released on July 11th of 2023 called The Entrepreneur's Balancing Act, Insights from Mike Michalowicz. Now, back to your regular <laughs> scheduled show. My journey through four different business ventures has taught me that financial planning isn't just box to check. It's the backbone of your business's survival and growth. It's not just about making money. It's about managing and preserving it. When you have a robust financial plan in place, you're better equipped to make informed decisions, tackle challenges head on, and seize opportunities as they arise. So as we prepare for the new year, remember that your financial planning is your compass for financial success. It's not just a strategy. It's the foundation upon which your business stands or falls. Now, let's talk marketing. You know I believe that marketing is the keystone of any successful business, especially service-based businesses. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail today because, let's face it, I talk about it in almost every other episode. I am a marketer, and I spend a significant amount of time marketing my own business, and I think it's imperative that you either personally spend time planning and executing your marketing or delegating the task to someone who has the sole goal to garner more opportunities for your company in the year to come. If you don't know where to start, check out my book, The Rule of 26. I'm giving it away for free at ruleof26.com. It's a quick read and will get you pointed in the right direction when it comes to creating a solid marketing plan. Now, let's talk about the final piece of the puzzle in your annual planning, optimizing your operations. This step is often underestimated, but can be a game changer for service-based businesses. I have four steps to this process. First step is optimizing operations, 
which begins with identifying and eliminating inefficiencies in my process. Inefficiencies can manifest as bottlenecks, repetitive tasks, or outdated workflows. These not only uh, waste time, but also cost you money. By conducting a thorough review of your operations, you can pinpoint areas where improvements are needed. The second piece is saving time and money. Streamlining operations isn't just about making things smoother. It's about saving precious resources. When you eliminate unnecessary steps and redundancies, you free up valuable time and reduce operational costs. This newfound efficiency allows you to serve more clients, take on additional projects, or simply have more time to focus on strategic growth. Streamlining your operations also helps you with the next step, which is staying agile and adaptable. In today's fast-paced business landscape, adaptability is key. Service-based businesses often face shifting client demands and market dynamics. By staying agile in your approach, you better prepare to tackle whatever comes your way. This might involve adopting new technologies, embracing flexible work arrangements, or rethinking your service delivery model altogether. Efficient operations also translates to a better customer experience. Clients appreciate prompt responses, efficient service delivery, and hassle-free experience. When you optimize your operations, you're better equipped to meet and exceed customer expectations, which can lead to uh, increased loyalty and referrals we talked about earlier. It's important to remember that optimizing your operations is not a one-time task. It's a mindset of continuous improvement. It's a part of your business culture to regularly review and refine your processes. Encourage feedback from your team members who are on the front lines of the service delivery. Their insights can be invaluable in identifying areas for improvement. One of our core values at Buzzworthy Marketing addresses this very topic with our dedication to constructive dissatisfaction. It's a concept that focuses on the fact that no matter how well we execute a task or how awesome a project turns out, there is always room for improvement. So once we have celebrated our accomplishments, we start to review how we can make it even better the next time. Which brings me to the final piece of my annual planning process adapting. Adaptability is a topic that is close to my heart, as I've seen firsthand how businesses can thrive or struggle based on their ability to adapt. Adaptability is a two-step process, staying informed and pivoting when necessary. The first step and foremost is essential to keeping a finger on the pulse of your industry. Stay informed about the latest trends, emerging technologies, and shifts in customer preferences. This knowledge allows you to anticipate changes and proactively position your business to capitalize on new opportunities. Being informed allows you to properly pivot when necessary. In today's fast-paced business world, adaptability is a key factor in long-term success. The ability to pivot and adjust your strategies when necessary can be the difference between thriving and stagnating. If you notice that a particular service or product is losing relevance, be prepared to pivot towards more promising areas. Staying informed helps you recognize these opportunities and weaknesses. So make this two-step process a part of your annual plan. Your next end of your review and planning meeting will thank you. So as I wrap this up, and you prepare for a profitable new year, remember that staying informed and adaptable is not just a nice to have. It's a must have in today's business landscape. By keeping an eye on industry trends, being ready to pivot when necessary, and fostering a culture of adaptability within your business, you position yourself for long-term success and growth. The ability to navigate change effectively can be your secret weapon in achieving profitability in the coming year and beyond. So let's recap the top five things to prepare for a profitable new year. The first, reflect on the past year and learn from it. Second, set clear, smart goals. Then prioritize financial planning, develop a, strate a strategic marketing plan, and streamline your operations. Remember, these steps aren't just theoretical. 
They're actionable. Take immediate steps to put these strategies into practice. I hope you found these insights valuable and that they'll help you kickstart a profitable new year for your business. If you have any questions or would like to share your thoughts on this episode, reach out to us on social media or through our YouTube channel at Buzzworthy Marketing. And if you've enjoyed the show, please leave us a review. So until next time, stay buzzworthy.